We make no apology for it. We're talking about uh, the reaction to Nottingham Forest four-point deduction yesterday. Forest fury at that four-point deduction following on the Everton punishment, of course, and it might not be finished yet for Everton. And, of course, what next for Chelsea? And the big question is Manchester City. Um, will the calls for the elephant in the room? City's 115 charges only continue to grow louder and louder. Football finance expert Stefan Borson is alongside Simon and myself. And Stefan let's get to Chelsea has Saudi Arabia become a perfect FFP loophole for clubs sailing close to the wind wholesale reports tell us that Todd Bowley has made a recent visit to Saudi Arabia where he met the country's sports minister and the director of football for the Saudi Pro League Michael Eminalo a man that we know on this show there are reported links between Saudi's public investment fund who have invested into Clear Lake Capital the company who now own Chelsea what is going on with Chelsea at the moment? Now, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six messages who basically are saying, Chelsea fans, there's Terry, there's John, there's Graham, we're all Chelsea fans. Where are Chelsea in this conversation right now, Stefan? Where are they right now? What's going on with Chelsea? Well, we know for certain that they didn't breach 22-23 because if they had a breach 22-23... They'd been charged they'd have been charged and we'd have been sat here either af after the Chelsea Independent Commission or waiting for it to occur. So we know they got through 22-23 and in fairness to them in that year, it was a Champions League year and their revenue we now know was £512 million. So we know that actually they had a relatively uh, good year from a top line perspective and uh, that's that's all well and good. And we know all of this because, well, there's now a number of sources because, of course, none of the clubs who, or not none of them, but almost all of the clubs that have a year end of 30th of June 2023, almost all of them are waiting until the final possible day to release their accounts into the public domain, even though we know for certain that they were all signed off well in advance of the 31st of December. And we know that because they had to file them with the Premier League, of course. So they're all sat on these accounts. We don't know what they say, but we do know through various sources what some of the key numbers are. And in terms of Chelsea, we know that they made a £90 million pound loss for, uh, June to the, for the year to June 2023. Now, that occurred after they made a profit on disposal of player registrations and fixed assets of £142 million. Now, that means that Clearly, when you add those two things together, their, their losses, their operating losses, were absolutely enormous. They were over £230 million. Now, we were not aware that they would make as much of, as £142 million of profit in the last season. The number that was in the general, in, in the sort of public domain, when people did the maths and added up who they sold, was nearer £100 million. And there was an assumption that Mason Mount, because he was announced on Manchester United's website on the 1st of July, had been put into this current season. So the £55 million of profit was in this season. It now transpires that Mason Mount appears to have been transacted in 2223. And that is how they got is through, yeah. yeah. through twenty two twenty three, which means they've now got a fifty five million pound bigger hole this season. Correct, because we also know from the Blue Co accounts that they are currently from the post balance sheet events that they are currently something like forty eight million pound in profit for this year. But of course, this year, from an operating perspective is going to be even worse than last year. Because they've got no Champions League. Because they've got no Champions League. Right. And, well, they've got no Europe at all. Mm. So we know that straight two away... Two big cut runs, though. Yeah, but of course you pay away 45% of that revenue for every mm. for all of those games. Sure. So, so how did Chelsea deal with this? They, they, they've got to sell well, a, quite, quite a value of players to Saudi Arabia and it, that appears to be what they're doing well, I, well I, I don't know about the Saudi Arabia thing I mean the, the assumption has to be if my assumptions are well, right it, where, where else would the big market be well we, the, the, that assumes two things first of all it assumes that the Saudis are in many ways quite stupid in terms of their dealing and that they're not going to be commercial at all in their purchase of players it also assumes that the players that Saudi are going to target 
are the young players who, frankly, I don't think are going to go because it will make no difference at all to Chelsea's FFP and PSR position profit. if they sell players like Kepa and Lukaku because they don't make any profit on those players, even if, which we expect, their book values have been written down substantially since purchase. So really they have to find buyers for Chalabar for 20 million quid, for Brozier for 40 million quid, for Gallagher for 50 million quid. It's those sorts of deals that need to be done. And by the way, they all need to be done before 30th of June. And that, as we know, because it's actually articulated within the uh, Forest decision. There's a whole conversation about how hard it is yeah. to sell players yeah. in the period before June. The Premier League actually suggested more or less that it was impossible so and what, got a slight rebuke. What Stefan is basically saying in the shortest of terms, it's absolutely inconceivable that by December of next year, Chelsea won't be facing a charge from the Premier League for breaching financial fair play unless there's a complete sea change in the rules and a complete uh, rowing back from the perspective. If you're looking at Chelsea's numbers, unless they're going to go and sell somewhere in the region of £200 million of players that have a low cost base on them, so the players that you would think they're going to be yeah. least likely yeah, to yeah. sell, then Chelsea are going to be in the situation that Nottingham Forest and Everton have been in this time next year. Is that fair? Yeah. Steph, uh, you, you would go with that, Stefan, that Chelsea are looking at a predicament similar to the one Everton and Forrest find themselves in. Well, po possibly more severe. I mean, I, I think that the scale of the losses that they're currently uh, forecasting appear to me to be to be vastly in excess of both uh, Everton and Nottingham Forest. When I introduce you, I always say football finance expert, former financial advisor to Manchester City. And I'm looking at the fans of many clubs who are saying, what about City? What about City? Because they want to know what's going to happen to Manchester City. The other day in studio with myself and Simon Stefan was Peter Moore, the former Liverpool chief executive. And on this subject, he was pretty diplomatic about what may or may not await City. Look, I'm not surprised that there's 115 charges because it, there wouldn't be those charges if there wasn't something that the Premier League felt needed investigating. I, I can't speak to any of these charges. I think you remember the kind of WikiLeaks stuff that started to mm. come out of Germany a few years ago, yeah. and I think that put fuel on the fire. The Premier League got to do what the Premier League has to do. I'm proud of what we achieved uh, running our club in a safe, self-sustainable manner. Trent again talked about it, and I learned this from the owners. And when when I started to understand what financial fair play was, when I finally, I'm a video game guy, gets thrust into this. And John Henry, if he was sat here, would tell you he, they bought the club based on the premise that everybody would adhere to rules. I'm not saying anything about any other club here. I want to make that very clear. But it was absolutely beaten into me that we're going to do this right. We're going to drive our revenues. We're going to take full advantage of our global reach. And... I came up with this phrase. It was very clear to me from the get-go. We, we're, we're a club that has a global pulse powered by this massive local heart. So Peter Moore, the former chief exec, Stefan, was pretty diplomatic when he was in here. Now, that's fine. But when are we going to hear what awaits City? And what does await City? Well, he wasn't that diplomatic, was he? I mean, if you read between the lines, it's very clear what he was saying. So, um, But uh, he, I thought he spoke really well. Um, and clearly, the position that he had at Liverpool was different from the position that that uh, the uh, that City found themselves in uh, upon the takeover in two thousand and eight. So he did have that privilege of having one at that point one of the world's largest football clubs to to play with. So um, I, don't, I don't think it's a um, a similar situation. City were obviously in a growth phase and uh, and did what they they needed to do. Now, whether they've breached any rules, we'll, we will find out in due course. Uh, there's, uh, there's no rush in, in my mind, because if you go around making allegations uh, as serious as has been made against the club, they must be given the opportunity to defend themselves and they must also have a forum that is appropriate to the level of allegation that's been made. And as I've said to you many times, the allegations that are made against City are the most serious that, that are imaginable in, in the business world. They are allegations, effectively, that the accounts are wrong for 10 years. And if the accounts are wrong for 10 years and have been deliberately um, uh, misrepresented. misrepresented and made wrong by um, 
uh, false um, contracts with sponsors and other parties, then clearly there will be nowhere to hide. But there is also yeah. there is also an obligation upon the football fraternity. I understand the obliga- uh, the, uh, the uh, assertions that you're making, but sport operates in a different place and has different. Um, ramifications from it than other businesses so whilst we compare outcomes for what you are able to defend yourself with to take two three and maybe even four years to get an outcome um, from my mind compromises the sport itself and so there should be slightly different parameters and we have seen Manchester City whether it's trying to deny the media access to court hearings or, or what well, they did they well, tried, no, no. The, the, the mail went, no, no, the no. Daily mail let's went be court clear and got it overturned. both the Premier League and the club both wanted those hearings to be kept secret. It was a joint position between the Premier League and the club. Irrespective of whether the well, Premier League was... Well, not irrespective. It's it a is, very it important is. distinction. It may, it may well be that they're, at that particular moment in time, the, the, two, Premier agen- League the two, rules. Two, two agendas aligned. But Manchester City would have been very happy with that agenda and very motivated by it. And we look at some of the arguments that are being made by Manchester City and some of the discussions I've heard you recently having with various other people. And some of the things that are underneath the bonnet are relatively ridiculous, making assertions about what their stadium rights are worth at £15 million, when we know that that's not representative of the value. I think Manchester City, and I think for the good of football, and for the good of the well-being of, of the structure of the Premier League, that this case shouldn't be allowed to drag on because Manchester City have enormous legal resource. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'll be also interested to see how Manchester City and who is paying those legal bills and how those are being accounted for in Manchester City's accounts because we're talking about a cottage industry being built up around what mm. Manchester City are prepared sure. to spend. I think in short, what, what, Stephen, what? it shouldn't entitle them to a no-rush investigation. No, no, no. Let, 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 let me address the points that were made. First of all, the allegations that are made are personal allegations relating to a number of uh, individuals because you can't get to the point of what the allegations actually say in terms of sham contracts and everything else without actually finding that somebody was deliberately uh, carrying out those actions and therefore was, was acting illegally. It is also an allegation that certain people have perjured themselves at CAS, for example, and in other places. Again, these are very serious allegations. They can't just be dismissed by, oh, well, let's just expedite the whole thing because it's football. If you go around no one, making no allegations... Hang on, let me finish. No if that. you go around quite, making quite perjury, allegations that go way beyond the sport, then those individuals have to be given the platform to be able to defend themselves, and the club, likewise, has to be given that platform. Now, in terms of the points that you made around the Etihad contracts... Those, those arguments have already been made and are not the arguments that are alleged. This is not a claim that certain of Manchester City's contracts were greater than fair value. UEFA themselves accepted, no, both at CAS and yeah. in, in 2014, that those contracts were for their fair value. And it was not put into play in CAS. The, the allegations that are made in the Premier League case are not around fair value. They're effectively saying that rather than the contracts being £60, £70 million, pounds, that the contracts were only ever £8 million. Pounds, and that therefore, the contracts that are accounted for in City's accounts are shams. Mm. Now, City must be given an opportunity to defend themselves. And it goes way beyond from the sporting perspective. I no accept... One's dispute, no one's disputing that. Should that well, take forever? Well, well then we're in perfect but, but, agreement. But no, no, Should that take well, forever? Not, because, because it has to take a very long time. If you were to look at a situation, there's a guy in the press at the moment, a guy called Mike uh, Mike Lynch of Autonomy. Yeah. I'm, very, yeah, I'm, very similar case. He's actually been extradited to the US. That's slightly different. It's not. It's a very similar level of allegation and it well, involves well, it's, a well, it's, serious it's, amount of money. It's slightly and different. that case took many, many years, first of all, the judgment alone on that case was 1,500 pages I, long and took two years it, to come after the trial. That's a comparison, because I know not Mike Lynch, I know the business, and I know who bought it, I know who also, also owned it, which was the of founder course. was my, one of my best friends. Well, so I know the It's all public information. Story. So yeah. absolutely. But what we're talking about is a reasonable amount of time. Of course Manchester City must be given a fair opportunity to defend themselves. And evidence that's, uh, that's come out afterwards about potentially conflicting information, what was, what was and wasn't said in the Court of Arbitration and Sport, uh, should also be given the opportunity to air but i made i made a view about two about uh, two months ago that this will take up into the mid 2020s maybe even going further than that you push back and actually that's ridiculous no i think you said 2030 yeah i did and i, and I think by the time this comes to an adjudication it'll be probably about <laughs> 2026 20, 27 three four years to me is is far too long far too long it's too long but don't go around making allegations to be that way 
Well, they're not well, making allegations. They're make they're charging people with what they believe they have the evidence to prove. Okay, and and they and are it was and it was proven by UEFA, I, I, who have come out I'm, subsequently and said we were right in the first place. We're going to have to wait. And by the way, it's perfectly reasonable for them to raise the case that they want to raise. I don't think they've done it in a very oh, clever poorly. way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right. But in this absolutely forum, right. they must be given the opportunity to defend themselves. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.